Welcome to Call Us Podcast. My name is Grant. And I'm Nick. And today we're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, kind of the, the the next step. We did the off piece with Google, and now we're going to do the off piece piece using Microsoft. And Microsoft has a bunch of different options inside of Azure, what used to be called Azure Active Directory, but is now Enter ID uh, to be able to uh, log people in uh, with a kind of OAuth type flow. So, uh, Meg, you want to uh, let's go ahead. We're going to generate a project, and we're just going to do the signing with Microsoft. Uh, and we'll go from there. Yeah, very similar to what we did with Google, just with Microsoft. Um, and then we can come down here, we can just call this, uh, I forget exactly what I called it last time, we'll just say Microsoft demo. If I can spell Perfect. that right. I did spell right. Okay, great. Um, and then we can copy these and head over here, paste all of that, and then let that run. And and just delving up our project. Yep, just like last time, we'll also um, go ahead and do uh, our first migration too, so we can just launch the app easily. And while that's running, let me see if I can find it. All right. So this is just the first step. We're gonna have to then go into the web and look at a few other things uh, to get Azure set up. And also one, one thing to note is that the way the CoS template is set up, it does use identity. And so you're going to use identity on top of, or maybe even under, if you wanna call it that, um, on top of whatever off uh, services that you wanna use. And this just does a whole bunch of things for us that makes it easier. You don't have to. You can actually go in and do this without identity. In fact, I just did a project this weekend that does not use identity, uses CoS um, and uses external auth. But you have to do, if you want to use more than one auth provider, you have to do some things on your own, like selecting which auth provider you want to actually um, use. So you have to selection. So, okay, there's the thing. Uh, we just did all of the all the pieces. Yep. And we're just going to write our migration real quick. Perfect. Um, my naming convention is off from last time. I capitalize it usually. No, that's so. Uh, Sorry, we're going to leave this project. It's a throwaway project. <laughs> so we are going to show you all the keys so you kind of know what they look like. These keys will be thrown away at the end. So uh, don't, you would normally not want to expose these. Uh, and it's kind of the same little disclaimer that we did last time that uh, we'll, we're where we put the keys. Uh, we'll kind of show you some ways to do that. Yeah. You can put them in here while you're following the tutorial. That's not here, uh, in here, but really. Fine. This is not where you want them. Yeah. And so yeah. you don't want the client secret in here. Do not put that in your app, app settings JSON. Either make it a secret um, on your local machine and then put it as an environment variable. So you right click there and you choose manage secrets and you can put it in here. Uh, or you can put it in the key vault and then use an AZ login to be able to allow access to that. So yeah, definitely do not commit this. Yeah. Um, it'll be compromised. But to make it easy, we're just going to do that. Yep. Okay. Let's shoot over to Azure. Right, so the uh, best way to get there is actually if you just come back up here and similar with the Google auth, um, there's a read more and it brings you to the Microsoft docs. And kind of the first thing here is um, this should already be added for you from the template. Mm -hmm. So now you'll just have to click this, which I have open right over here and click on new registration. And this is inside Azure, inside of Entra ID. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to do an app registration is, yep. is kind of where you yep. click on the manage tab on the left hand side and Down over here. if you want to navigate okay. there but this this should also bring you right to the page that i was on if you do this um okay user facing display name for the application uh soft uh off demo and Perfect. then okay see. so now we have some options yep we can do several different things. And if when you choose these, there's certain options that you actually can't go back on, you have to build a new app registration. So it's there are some issues in and around this uh, just so that you're aware of those things. Uh, so Meg, you wanna kind of walk through each one of these? Yeah, so um, this one is just, I mean, kind of as it says, it's a single tenant. So anybody in the Intel Tech organization can sign in this application. But if you're not in the Intel Tech org, you cannot sign into the app. So and if this was your org, like if you did this in your 365 work, this is how you would do it. Yep. So anybody in your org. Now, if you just go on and create an intra ID uh, environment, an Azure environment, and you create a tenant inside there that has your intra ID stuff in it, you're going to be the only one in there. And it's probably something like dot on Microsoft.com or something like that. 
you're going to have nobody in your tenant. So that's not something that you want to do. And really those tenants should be named like by a domain name, like intellitech.com or whatever the tenant's name is. Yeah. Uh, so just realize that that is an option only really if you're, it's really kind of for 0365 type usage. Yeah, like a work account or school account or something mm -hmm. like that. And and this is a great option if you're making an internal app that you yes. don't want anybody to get into because it gives you kind of like this default security that you yeah. don't have to worry about too much. Only people in your work can log in. Yep. Yeah, Microsoft just takes care of that for you. Anybody with that O365 um, kind of account can log in. So this is any work account, any school account. Um, and this means people outside of your organization. So for example, um, people in IntelliTech, but maybe also people that go to um, Microsoft.com or Eastern Western yeah, University or whatever. That, yeah. Anywhere that uses O365 mm -hmm. or has Windows logins yeah. in general. So like you could still be like a Google Apps user, but if your machines have a have a Microsoft login that is managed by Azure, then you can still do that. So there's yeah. there's lots of options. Or although a lot of organizations do use uh, use O365, but even many more may use something else plus uh, a Microsoft sign in. Yes, yeah, so this is great if you're building some kind of enterprise application that um, people with those O365 accounts. They really only apply to businesses. Yeah, this other one here is to allow both those work and school accounts, kind of as you see here, but it also allows personal accounts. Um, so like, as it kind of says, examples of like, if you had like a Skype account or an Xbox account, you could log in with that to this application. Uh, right. So you can basically create free accounts, right? So, so the other options, you can't, not everybody can log in. Option one or two, you're either inside the org or you have an O365. And the only way to get one of those is either by office or to go through all the steps of setting up an Azure tenant. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things there you'd have to yeah, do. It's pretty high bar to get into the Right. This one's way lower. You can just go sign up for a free live account. Right? Yeah. Boom. That's it. And you can use those accounts. Yeah. Um, so this is just if you wanted to open this to the public, anybody with a Microsoft account can log in. And this is a little bit of a, this is, this is kind of exposing a little bit of what Microsoft, they have this kind of bifurcation of accounts, right? There's this idea that I have organizational accounts, but then you also have personal accounts. And so they don't, they no longer allow them to do the same, but for those of us who have been doing this for a very long time, we actually have two different accounts yeah. that are the same username. Anyway, you can fix that, but it's ass. Yeah, so a little bit more complicated than setting up Google Auth, just. Yeah, there's just more yeah. options, right? There's just a lot more things you can do. And then finally, we have the last one. Yeah, which this is just, this option without the school or work account. Right. So if you're making a consumer app, that's the one to do. Let's choose the hardest one, number three. Great, great. We'll do that one. Um, <laughs> is okay. it, it's like the most open, right? You it can is, use yeah. all kinds of different things. Anybody can come in. Okay, redirect URI. So this, if we go back to the logs here, um, or sorry, the docs here, I don't know why I said logs. There probably is something in here, but if not, yeah, right here. So, uh, oh no, this is for later. Okay, hold on. So we can set this later too. Yeah, we can set this later. So web, and then we can just put in, this is the same place we're going to put in well, our... We'll, we'll do it. We'll do it now. Oh, we can do it now. That's fine. Yeah. Basically, it's it's this here um, for when you're creating your uh, all your client secret and your redirect stuff. So this is similar to what we were doing at Google where you just put in your local host yep. slash whatever that redirect is. And, and you can have multiple redirects for multiple different yeah. op endpoints. And so essentially what's going to happen is your app is going to redirect over to Microsoft with a uh, effectively where it came from and then it's going to redirect back and it only goes back to the places that it knows because otherwise anybody could use your auth endpoint if you had to pass into your auth endpoint where you wanted to come back well then your auth endpoint really isn't secure i mean in that respect so it, it has kind of these known endpoints and now you do also have to have the secret which is super important too so yeah and i'm just launching to get the port yeah get the partner um so we'll wait for just a second while that launches um it a little fail, but it'll pop up just long enough. And we could, I guess, go into the debug settings to pull that out too. But okay. as soon as it's easier just to launch it and see what happens. But also, let's just know we have any problems. Yeah. Any problems other than the same client ID and client secret? Right. That should be the error that we see. If not, there's a problem. And thinking takes a little bit of time. All right. Yeah. There we go. So that's first time. So there we go. That. Come back here. Pop that right in front. And now we have our redirect URL. Right. So we can hit register. Now, like in the Google process, there is a process for uh, going through like a, a, an approval, essentially, right? They're not going to let you just do this and put it out to anybody. So we'll probably see some of those things yeah. uh, here. There's uh, there's there's a process of, of doing that. So you just have there's some good prompts in here to, to make that happen. Yeah, but you don't have to go through the branding exercise first, though, which is kind of cool. They don't force you yeah. to do those screens. 
right up front. Yep. So Android okay. Will... So there's our client ID. Yep. So we're gonna take so that. Grab that. Bring that over to our Paste client. In there. And now we wanted to make a secret. So and that that that, that client ID is much more public than the secret is. So yeah. I mean, it's okay if you put this. Um, in your app settings and commit it. It's mm -hmm. it's specifically the secret. The secret is the commission. I mean, if you want to be extra secure, you could put your client ID in key vault, but you can't roll it or anything, so it's not yeah not a big deal. With secrets, though, you can roll these, and um, basically what that means. Well, first of all, you can put expir expiration date on here. We'll keep this at six months because I, it's only gonna last it's six gonna hours. Yeah, so. long. But you can even um, make it longer than. The 730 days here, I believe, with the custom option. Yeah. Just make sure if you go anything kind of too far in the future, just put a calendar. Just mark your calendar because otherwise your app will literally stop working. Um, which will really suck. And having a, a, a process for rolling your secrets is a really good idea. Or just if you want to leave them long live, that's yeah. okay too. These This isn't going out on the internet. But if you did happen to do that, and you can, you see here, there's spots for more than one secret. So I can actually have multiple secrets active at the same time. And so you get an idea of, of how these can work. Because you really need that in order to, I want to move one secret into production to start with, and then I'm going to make a new one, and I'm going to roll that one into production, and then I'm going to remove the old one. Yeah, because so imagine this idea. one's expiring, and you need to refresh it, basically. Right. Before you delete it, you make a new secret, yep. set up that secret in production, and then remove this once. And, and it is important here that there's a secret ID is not the actual secret. <laughs> the value is the secret. Yeah, that's good. Because every everything in Azure has kind of a GUID attached to it. And so this is just one example. Yeah, and make sure you copy this because as soon as you refresh this page, you're not you going go. to ever see it again. It is not there. Yeah. So hopefully that's on my clipboard. If not, we'll just make another secret. True. All right, but well, we're good. Boom, there uh, it is. Yeah, so this you, you won't be able to see this value ever again unless you've put it somewhere else other than here. Um, or if you logged it out some by pulling this, but don't do that. <laughs> okay, so this should just launch now. So let's go ahead and try that out. Let's see, moment of truth. See if we did all the steps right. Yeah, and if it doesn't launch, we'll go read the docs a little bit more. There we go. Sign with Microsoft. Now this is a screen that um, Coas provides uh, to allow you to sign into potentially multiple if you had another one. And here's a permission request. So when remember we put in the name, mm -hmm. there's the name. Yep. And you see how it says unverified. So it tells people, hey, you know, this is just some it's Yahoo's right out now. there on the internet that are doing these things. And so now you get to say uh, what you're actually giving up here. And we could have gone in and said what specific things we wanted to go into Azure to be able to get. Like, what are we actually giving access to? Yeah. Or what are we, in our case, the apps, the app registration is requesting certain permissions. And so you, you specify those in your app registration, which ones you want to go get. And these are the ones that come by default. Yeah, and this is how we're going to get the user's name when they log in and their profile picture and stuff like yeah. that. So we'll hit accept because I trust my app. Oh, yeah, huge mistake. <laughs> All right, starting up our app, there you go. and there we go. So I'll log in, um, and that's it. Just kind of the same thing as yeah. Google. And the, the process really looks the same as what we have for for Google Auth. It, it, it there's some custom pieces around Google and custom pieces around Microsoft, but uh, otherwise this thing is uh, pretty much set to go. And there's other Auth schemes if you want to use them. You'll follow the same pattern like if you want to use Facebook or LinkedIn or anything like that. Uh, it's it's pretty simple. So anyway, anything else, Meg? That's it. Yeah. We'll awesome. go for maybe um, deploying in the next. Yeah, because now we, we're coming. We, it comes with some GitHub actions right out of the box that yeah. you can use to deploy. So we'll show you how to do that. So, well, until next time, keep on building Coalesce apps. Thanks all.